afternoon, good morning, good evening, good evening, good morning, good afternoon. It's after <laughs> five, so and um, Pulu and I will be talking about our experience within um, introducing the asset-based approach in local government. Um, just before we start with that, there's just a, a few things that we need to inform you about. Christella, you've been in other sessions. Jamel, you've been in other sessions. You've seen this, eh? Yes. Oh, no, this is the, sorry, this is the first session I'm doing. Who's this? Um, Maurice? Ah, okay, so we'll count you also. Audio, video, tech support, recording. So recording will take place. Um, to keep the bandwidth open, you can keep your video off if you talk. It will be nice just to see your face. Um, it just helps also. We're going to try and show our faces um, the whole time. Um, if you have any technical problems, just switch off and switch on again. That happened to me. I might also freeze. Um, before we get started, there's this resource book. Um, you should know about that. Um, you know, where you can continue to make a contribution. Stay mute until we start. So, okay, we're going to be starting now. Uh, yeah, just troubleshooting bandwidth, switch on and off, um, keep your Zoom video off just to help and notify the host, which is Morisa also. She's a host and participant who just, you can even just private chat that quickly. Um, okay, and so yeah, let's get started. Introduce yourself in the chat box. Um, while you're doing that, I'm Conrad Jardine. I'm going to take up the presentation because we don't have a presentation. We're not going to use a presentation heavy um, session, but now how do I do that? I need to get rid of this. Marisa, can you get rid of it at your side? Ah, bloody technology. Sorry about that. Hey, hey. Ah. Okay, what am I doing? Oh, there we are. Okay, so that's off, yeah. Okay, so... Um, so basically, yeah, welcome, welcome everybody. So we are a small group, so we can just quickly um, go around to share quickly um, who we are and all that stuff. Um, my name is Conrad Jardine. I'm, I'm, I work for the Gauteng Provincial Government. And um, yeah, so um, it's been, how long, Pulu? Four, five years. Five years, um, five years now. Five ways that we've been trying to introduce the ABCD approach. We'll share more about that. Pulu, introduce yourself quickly. My name is Tebigosi Pulu. I'm working for Mfuni Local Municipality in Gauteng. Uh, I met Conrad, I think, five, five to six years ago. He introduced us to ABCD, but we'll talk more about it as we go on the program. Okay, Marisa. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi, I'm, oh, my camera. Hi, everyone. I'm Marisa Muloto. I'm based in Cape Town. I met Conrad also three, three years ago. Um, mm -hmm. And I actually trained with Janine. I see Janine just dropped off um, in ABCD. And yeah, I see myself as a pracademic. So I'm an intermediary between <laughs> academic knowledge and practitioner. Uh, okay, pracademic, that's a nice term. Um, Shamiel? Is it Shamiel? Hi, good afternoon, everyone. My name is Shamal Fortain. I am a program officer at an NGO called the Initiative for Community Advancement in Piketberg. Um, so okay. as, a, as a program officer, I run um, our community engagement program, and we would also like to implement the ABCD model in local communities here. So I think that's why I'm here today. Oh wow! Well, thanks for your support and to hear from uh, to hear what your government can do for you, or is it the other way around? What you can do for your government, Shamil? Yeah. How did you hear about this? If we may ask, 
Um, so Yolisa from SJS, oh, um, she shared it okay. with our director and then he asked me to join. Okay, excellent. Oh, the world is getting small, Pulu. Okay, <laughs> Christella. Okay, my name is, uh, well, everybody calls me Chris. Uh, I'm Engelbrecht from Makanda, Eastern Cape, Grahamstown. I'm working for the Eastern Cape Provincial Government, Social Development. Uh, oh. We met, what's it, four years ago at the Ibiza in Port Elizabeth. Oh, I am, okay, yes. I am one, I used to be a trustee of Ikala Trust, where I was introduced okay. to ABCD by Cody. And uh, subsequently, we've been training people in ABCD. But luckily now, social development has approved the policy on ABCD as oh. one of the approaches to be followed by <laughs> us. Now. That's wonderful. <laughs> wow, yeah, so you... we, we are ABCD now. Yeah. You better <laughs> share that with us. Um, share, please share that. Um, share that with us, Christella. So maybe just post your email and we will flood you with requests. That's excellent. That's great news, Christella. Um, um, thanks for, for, for joining us. Yeah. And there's Janine Ward. Hi okay. there, everybody. Um, so good to be amongst my, my fellow colleagues and South Africans and also three of my ABCD graduates because Conrad was in my class and Spulu is currently... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Certificate. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. And Marisa was trained by me at in my in my sister's house in Cape Town. Just just Marisa and another lady, Leanne. So it feels like I'm with family, which is fantastic. And I'm so excited to see that that water turning because, yeah, I mean, I've been doing ABCD for nearly forty years, and so it's really wonderful to see that it is taking off. Fantastic. Okay, now that that's excellent. Um, Christella, thanks for your email. Maybe Marisa, you can just drop an email to get her, get her into the system. You can CC me around that, and then Christella can just forward it. Uh, yeah. Okay. Let's uh, let's uh, we've got an hour, so we can go quite fast. We a small group of South Africans, so maybe what we can do is um, instead of just talking to each other about what we know, let's you know um, also um, raise the level of conversation into how do we really um, take it into government without it just being like another tick box, box, box exercise. But before we start with that, Pulu and I are just gonna share some basic experience. Christella, you can also come into that. And uh, um, Shamyal, you can just ask any questions. So what has it got to do with um, community-based organizations and all that stuff? You, mm -hmm. you, know, you get those type of questions, you know, even if you say leave um, government should stay out of the picture, then we'll have to figure out how to get it to the picture type of thing. Okay, just a um, quick, quick intro. Um, I mean, we know our constitution. Again, remember from what I shared earlier on what the Leeds um, Council had did, they wrote it into the strategy document. We've got it into mm -hmm. our constitution. If there's anything, I mean, the, it, that gives us the marching order. We must promote participatory democracy over and beyond just, um, you know, the electoral system. So that's quite ingrained and it's deeply ingrained. It can't be taken out. So the, for, for, for us, the asset-based approach gives practical, real meaning to that. Um, and, and then, of course, we also know our societies are um, highly politicized, highly inflamed. You can have, even if you call a bri, politics will feature at that bri. So even a, a simple bri will become a, a politicized session. So, um, and, and that's, for, uh, that's for real good reasons that um, one, one of the up uptakes of that is that nobody can run away without democracy. And we've seen it over the past um, decade or so, how that's happening. Um, then just our own, um, just for our purpose, I'm, I'm, I'm so, I'm six years with, with, with um, cooperative governance, so Gauteng province, and I happened to be there um, employed as the, I was quite excited when I applied for the job, and when I got it, I realized it's not the job that I thought it would be. So I'm, I was employed as the director for public participation, and when I got there, like, what the heck do you do with public participation? Because it's just community meetings, and then you hear about war committee meetings, um, Christella, you should have encountered some ward committees, especially you, Shamyal. Ward committee meetings, and then we must tick boxes. Did the meetings take place and all that stuff? And in the meantime, we had all these protests happening and demand and also disengagement as a, as a consequence of, of the distortions within the sector. 
So, um, so, so the whole idea of the, the, the asset-based approach then, um, so it was a whole number of things that happened, um, you know, thinking, talking, and then bumping into people. Um, um, I bumped into Sean, um, Sean Samuels, um, Ulysses' um, colleague, you know, and we started chatting and they were doing something for GIZ in the Eastern Cape on the ABCD. And then I met a colleague, um, Morisa, you know him, um, Spongiseni Vilakazi. That reminded me about the work we did way back around 2008, um, where we started introducing the ABCD in a small community, then KZN. And I was quite shocked and astounded. Like, you know, and, and of course, the question is, how do we take up the ABCD? Um, because remember, I'm in public participation. I mean, uh, you know, you know the bureaucracy of, of, of government and separations and all that stuff. So it, the, the asset-based approach was more step back to enable to, to allow citizens to generate content that enables them to participate. So, so if you look at that whole spectrum of the International Association for Public Participation, it talks about information consultation. We've sort of dabbled with that in Gizo's community meeting. We give um, lots of um, program information and all that stuff, but just about what government delivers. So, so the, the International Association for Public Participation talks about that. And then of course, the real struggle, the real challenge is, what does it really mean to involve people? What does it really mean when we say government is collaborating with, 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 with communities and citizens around local, lo local solutions, whatever? And, and of course, the word empowerment is so um, entrenched in our vocabulary that sometimes we don't even have to utter it or think about it, we just say empowerment. But for us, for us, the real question was, what does it really mean to empower? And so we're finding quite a good fit between the asset-based approach and, and the International Association um, of, for Public Participation. Um, so, so um, um, yeah, IAP2 Public Participation um, um, Spectrum. So there we were. And then um, I, I meet all the colleagues from the municipalities and all that stuff. And we need to, and I could see like we're going for war committee and we were going for local government elections and we were just going to do another tick box and all this stuff. So slowly through discussions and workshops, um, we've introduced the idea of an asset-based approach. Um, and um, around 2018, Apollo, where we, or 27. Yeah, 2017, that's when, um, you know, the challenge was opened up, like, what do you want to do? What do you want to take home? Um, you know, and there was a strong, st strong level of interest from the municipalities, um, especially from Infulini and Mohali municipalities. So, so that's where our journey basically started. But we still didn't figure out, you know, how we're going to do it and what we're going to do. Um, we were sort of still, you know, lost in the in the forest around, you know, trying to find our way and all that stuff because it wasn't that clear cut. So the big question is, how do we, um, how do we, in all that government delivers, um, and what citizens demand, do we um, take a step back to enable citizens to lead? So in other words. Uh, you know, can government take a step back? Would they be willing to do that? And then, of course, also, how do we, when we say introduce an asset-based approach, what would it look like in government? And maybe we can have a discussion around that. So, Pulu, over to you. So, you heard about the ABCD, and um, yeah, you dragged us all the way to Infolin, and we tested it out there. Yeah, thanks. Uh, thanks, Mr. Benzi, and thanks to everyone. Uh, I think, let me just start by saying, I met uh, Conrad, Janine, I think it was around 2016. Can you hear me? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I met, yeah, I met Conrad around 2016. Uh, when I met him, it was when we were preparing for the elections and the induction of the old committees. So he introduced, introduced us into this concept of Msebenzi. And they look like, ah, what is this Msebenzi is all about? Uh, then he would explain, no, 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 when uh, he says, Zulu name to be a worker, you are a worker here, so let's go there and work. And then he'd come and tell us, no, colleagues, let's just inspire to do the good things all the time. So we started to work, to get along as we were working. And I remember I contracted at some point, as we were doing the work that we were doing, some colleagues, they would say, yeah, this contract with your approach, you're not going to survive in the, in the space of government. You know, in government, we don't do 
we don't do things the way you do. And I'm happy that today is still working for government and is here and we're still pushing forward for ABCD. But uh, that's the mindset that we were amongst, uh, we find ourselves amongst at a time. Uh, Janine, as you know, that uh, when we introduced into ABCD, we had to get into the swimming pool and try to turn the water the way we did. And then of course, as we were introduced, every, every, everyone in the room as well, the municipality workers, they would say, no, 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 let me start. It was just a competition of where do we start. So I had to just invite Conrad to Inflin because Conrad come to Inflin, let's just do this. Uh, because one of the reasons is because firstly, one interesting part about ABCD is how we change the mindset because our approach really as government is based on a need-based approach. And every time when you do the so-called public participation, you just tick the box or you just go to the people, then this is what you are going to do. It's a top-down approach instead of a bottom-up approach. And of course, people will just have to to, to, to take whatever that you come, you come up with government. So the planning was not inclusive. And at the time, uh, the constitution allows us to say, we have to be inclusive in our approach. And how do we then start to embrace the, 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 the features of the constitution to say that we are inclusive, more especially from planning and budgeting, because in most, in most of the cases, we are not inclusive in planning and budgeting. So that's how we introduce ABCD but it was more to change the mindset from both inside the government and also in the communities. We worked in Mfulin with a number of, uh, with a number of uh, communities. Uh, we engaged a number of communities around ABCD and uh, they were very much interested in this. And I you know one good thing that you'd enjoy about ABCD, immediately when you start to introduce the approach, once people, they get it, they just move. Uh, I remember one of the councillor, councillor Maklasi, we just met her once, we introduced ABT, ABCD to her, and then Conrad came, just a brief workshop on ABCD. She just moved. But one of the interesting parts that I think, as I conclude, Conrad, uh, which was the most, 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 most interesting to me was how do we discover, uh, how do we discover talents, how do we discover gifts in communities, especially when we embark on an asset, a, a asset asset mapping because our approach to asset mapping was just to profiling the world, you know, profiling the world. You've got the profile, you just check how many churches do we have there, how many schools do we have there, but you don't go into deep as you would when you do the transact dot and then when you do the asset mapping, especially when you involve the communities to do the asset mapping without necessarily you doing it for them. Because in most of the cases, uh, we will just do the profiling of the world, but it's not necessarily the communities themselves who do it. We would then get the community development worker to come and do the, 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 the what you call it, the, the profiling of the world. And the profiling of the world will focus more on physical structures. It, it could not include even the association, but immediately when we were introduced to ABCD, then we started to refocus, the mindset changed, the mindset shifted. And then we then focused on a real asset mapping. What is in that you will find in the world? What is the strength that you find in that particular communities? What are the capabilities? What are the abilities of that, of, of that particular community? And this is what we've been doing, uh, especially in Ward 6, in Bupilo, in Ward 23 and Ward 7 around Bupilo. So we've been doing it for quite some time. I think it's been five years now, Conrad, since we've been working since we've been working around that. So one of the main, main major breakthrough now, it's what I think uh, Christelle has done, Christelle has done uh, with the social development, institutionalizing the ABCD within the institution itself, which is in Fulani. Because once we are institutionalizing it, it means people will be inclusive, it, there'll be more of an inclusive approach, especially when it comes into planning your IDP. Conrad just talk about it, the integrated development plan of the municipality. Uh, it's more of, we, we, we look at more inclusive ways of how do, we in, how do we embark on an inclusive approach? Because in most of the cases, people do not, at some point people will tell us, I, I don't even know your work committees. I don't even know what is, in, what is contained in the IDP. In fact, we did not even submit whatever that you have, have included in the, in the IDP. So the planning was a, just a top-down approach. We just come on top, we say, here's, a, here's it's, it's what we are just, 
And one of the sad part to that of it is that once people have signed the register, we've just ticked the book that no, we had a public participation. People have came and filled the hole. So that's why now the water the, 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 the water is changing, Janine. Uh, we have engaged a number of MFLINI uh, officials around that. I think we have had a brief workshop, a dialogue between the officials and the communities in MFLINI. And the officials, they start to see things the different way now. And I hope that, Conrad, I did not take much of your time. Thank you. No, Polo, that's perfect. I mean, it just gives an overview. Um, but also just to, 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 to add to that, it's early days. Um, you know, so we did the, what we did not wanted to do was to go the formalistic way of, you know, first drafting, you know, um, strategies and policies and, 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 and concept notes and all that stuff, because in government, there was also the fatigue of, of ideas, not be, as besides just, you know, the, 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 the poverty of ideas, but, but every, every idea basically was just not that it was dismissed, but you know, um, I don't know if, if some of the people remember it way back in 2014, 2015, through D uh, DCOC National, through the support of the European Union, and I think GIZ was also involved, where they've introduced, uh, um, you know, the community-based planning. And people were trained and nothing happened. So it's, it's, that was sort of the experience of people within government, uh, especially when it comes to matters of public participation and community development. So it all became just bureaucratized. So what we did was test and use the results. And we were quite pleasantly surprised at the way um, ordinary citizens responded because whenever a government official meets with community members, you know, there's the, um, you know, overwhelming of, of complaints and all that government didn't do that. And I will jump in and promise, okay, I will see what we can do, you know, the spin doctoring type of thing. But in, in Bopilong, we've tested that and it took um, quite a number of sessions, at least three sessions before we could say that ice is broken. So that, um, community members can, you know, sit up and, and, and do something. I want to show you quickly just a slide um, while it's loading, just a, a slide while it's loading. Um, yeah, th th this, is, this is the council of Matlase um, that Pulu was talking about. This is Councillor Matlasi, um, an ordinary councillor trying to do an ordinary piece of job as a ward councillor. And when we introduced it to the asset-based approach, you know, it resonated with our own aspirations and dreams about what can, what, what can I do to work with the community, you know, instead of just like being seen as the councillor, as being the, 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 the government, um, you know, sort of represent, state representatives. So in that, what we also did was to take, um, um, take people to, 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 to visit other community initiatives, not necessarily what we say ABCD, but just where people have done something sterling, extraordinary, out of the norm, stepping out of the norm. So we took them to Vukuz and Zela in Shabal, where a group of youngsters just turned a rubbish dump into, into a, 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 you know, vegetable garden. You know, again, you know, people using their own assets and abilities. And the councillor basically, when she went back by the very next week, groups of community members were organized to, to, to you follow the same example of what, what they call Vukus and Zela. So that was just a picture I wanted to show you. Um, this, this was just another organization. Of course, these are organizations that, and, and citizens that, that are really upset with government. There's electricity failures, water cuts, the places that um, um, basic services are not taking place. So it was quite interesting to have a different type of conversation as a government um, official, have a different type of conversation with these community organizations. organizations. That's Sadi there. She used to be at the national department and she used to help us out there. I'm gonna get rid of this now. Marisa, can you get rid of, rid of this? I'm going to show Conrad, you that later, go. Con okay. Conrad, just to explain yeah, a little yeah. bit, Mahata Moho and yeah, Raku Bella. Yeah, yeah Mahata, Mahata Moho is just, it's just a, it's a, South, it's a Southern Sutune meaning stepping together. Uh, I think Conrad has just shown you in that group to say, 
uh, this is the group. It was a group that it's a cleanup campaign. They started a cleanup campaign. Uh, they just decided to come up to come up together and do something about their own situation without necessarily say. In fact, they 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 just did what they could do with what they had. Uh, cleaning up the the, the 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 surrounding area. One of the interesting story about Matamo is how they went into each and every house, talking to each and every community member to contribute five friends in that particular community so that they can be able to, 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 to buy some refuse bags and clean up the whole area because the area was filthy, uh, dirty, everybody was just throwing uh, rubbish everywhere. So I, I just thought that I must just explain a bit matter more. And then it yeah. started to go into other areas because uh, the world is very, the, the community is very big. So the other communities, then they started to get an interest and then uh, the Riagubella that Conrad was talking about, Riagubella, it's another Southern Sutunian meaning. Now there is fire. There was fire. Now they oh, were yeah. feeling the fire. <laughs> yes. Now there is fire. So they started to feel the fire of ABCD. So it was it was starting to go and go to, into each and every community member there. Thanks, Conrad. I think that's what I wanted to do. Yeah, no, no, that, that's fine. We're sharing a quick story and then we need to go over to our guests that's here. I'm going to acknowledge them now. So... It's, like I've said, it's early days. It sounds, it's what we discovered at the community level. Um, but I must also say, we didn't set out to change government or whatever. We're looking for opportunities where we can introduce this within the process of government. Change then becomes a consequence of a different discourse, different thinking, and also different behavior. But, um, and Mahata Mo, the interesting part of Mahata Mo is that they then approach the municipality to say, okay, we will collect the rubbish and you come and pick it up with. Um, they did that a few times. And if, you know, so, so that was a community government um, um, what, what do you call it? Um, rudimentary, very basic, base, basic early days of 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 embryoic relationship between that it can work. If um, and and the question in in the other sessions we always ask is like we cannot go to scale, but how do we proliferate it or replicate it or whatever? But and then the other interesting thing is remember John talks about um, depending on the. Um, is McKnight talks about the windows you look through, depending on the window you look through, or depending on the lenses you put on, or what you see. Um, then it turns out that we discovered in the process quite a number of other locally community-driven initiatives. Um, and in the interactions, one participant actually asked me, Conrad, how do we keep politicians out of this? Politicians also meaning government because there has been 99% of the cases where communities initiate, it's a huge critique, where communities initiate and when government comes in, it just um, um, disrupts everything to the extent of collapse. And we also littered with such cases. Let me stop there and then we go into just a, a conversational mode. That's just, um, and there's much more to share. In 2019, we also did a huge thing in the city of Johannesburg. I will share the links. Um, um, Maurice will share the links. Welcome, Ritu. We have a date that we never honored. Ritu. Okay, Ritu is probably having a cup of coffee. Bernie's there. I saw Bernie. Did you leave us? Yeah, Bernie came in and left again, eh? Oh, God. Can you hear me? Yeah, no, Bernie's still with us. You. We can hear you. Bernie's name is there. Bernie, are you with us? Uh, Bernie zoomed out. Okay. No, she's still okay. here. The name is still here. Okay. I zoomed out yeah. when I saw that you were talking. Sorry. Oh, yeah, no, yeah, that's the thing. I will not offer pra. I will yeah. stop talking. Ritu? Yeah. Ritu? Okay, Ritu will get to us. So, so basically for us, it is, it is not easy working in government, introducing an ABCD approach. Um, it's very challenging, but it's also very promising. You know, just the responses from you know, some of the other colleagues within government, um, but it's just promising. And the challenge is how do we take it to practice? And that's where we're currently sitting with, you know, demonstrating that practical elements and, and Bernie and, and Christella would, would know quite well about that. So maybe let's just have a, because we're a small group, we can just go into, you know, some of these challenges and what 
advice or, or, or tips can you give us around ABCD and remember government as an institution and all the other issues coming up? Who wants to go first? Anybody? Can I just explain the water that everyone keeps, um, Tim, um, Ulu was talking about the water. <laughs> um, in our in yeah. the class at UJ, we would I was sharing the idea because I think, as you're saying, there's a lot of frustration on the ground when mm. when a few oh, people yeah. in, in in a government or in any organization, if it's just a few people that are exposed to something new, then for them to take it back to the rest of the team or to the rest of the the, the company or the or the government department, it's not easy because people. People want to change, but they don't want. People want change, but they don't want to change. <laughs> so we was we were. I was yeah. giving an example in the class, saying that when we lived in Swaziland, we had one of those swimming pools that is above the ground. It's in a in a wire mesh, and then you know the pool is 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 above ground level. And when our kids were little, what what my husband and I used to do is we used to put the kids in the pool and then walk around the pool because it was a circle. It was a circular pool. We'd walk around and around and around and make a current. And so because the kids were little, they could just lift their legs and the current would carry them in one direction. And then we'd all go whizzing around in the pool in a circle. And then, and then suddenly we'd say, okay, it's time to change now. And then we would start pushing in the opposite direction. And initially when you're walking in a current of water that's going this way, when you try and turn around and go in the opposite direction, it's difficult because the water is trying to pull you the other way. But you have to keep walking and you have to keep walking and eventually you can turn that current of water and make the water move in the opposite direction in the swimming pool. So I was just giving that as, a, as an example of what we're trying to do with ABCD in South Africa is to say, maybe the current is all going this way in government or in corporate or in whatever circles, and when we jump in as ABCD practitioners, what we're trying to do is make the swimming pool water go in the opposite direction. And it feels tough at first. It's always that first, that first motion of trying to change the current water that, that is hard. But if we all persevere, we're gonna get that current moving in the opposite direction. So that's what Hulu is talking about when he talks about the water. <laughs> Thanks for that, Janine, and that's how it sometimes feels. Eh? Um, I mean, like Bula was saying, some people actually took bets and they've lost, you know, saying I'll probably just last a year, so I better go and collect the, 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 the money they lost. Um, but that's how it feels, and it's quite challenging. Bernie just posted something on the chat. Maurice, are you able to see the chat there? Eh? Mm. Yes, um, so Bernie said, yeah, it, we must also remember that we're dealing with historical and systemic issues oh, that yeah. lead to our apartheid and also mm. past, so our apartheid past and that ABCD on its own cannot fix. So exposure to ABCD yeah. and being trained in ABCD is not only enough, but we have to actually link it to organizational development in order to intentionally change systems so that... Um, so so I can see, Bernie can see that the local government has to use a mix of approaches, but it could be grounded in strengths-based approaches. Yeah, okay, thanks Thanks for that, Bernie. Yeah, um, the systemic issues and the challenges, I will confess that sometimes I feel that these issues are so overwhelmed. Um, I feel sometimes overwhelmed with all the issues that we are confronted with, especially in our communities and especially, you know, the last loot looting environment, yeah. Okay, um, any other, anybody else that wants to come in? Conrad. Yes, Polo. Yes, I, I just, just to zoom in on what, uh, on what is, I think uh, in as much as we deal with the systematic issue, and I think we acknowledge that, but I think the change of mindset is much more important because all our approach as government, it's more of a need-based approach and uh, once well, as more as we focus on this need-based approach, then the people just, just sit back and think that they've got nothing to do with what is affecting them in their communities. Definitely government will come and fix everything. But the main approach now is to how do we then change and promote social accountability? And how do we, how do we ensure inclusiveness in our approach as government? 
I remember at uh, at some point one of the what, what in what in, in Bupilong because we are so used to, to 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 come and say we're gonna do this for you we're gonna do and at the end of the day we we, we are not able to do it in one of the in one of the in one of the areas in Bupilong there is the, the community there they just decided to say look a uh, government we've been having potholes in our area and we have just decided to fix our road by ourselves because we have got skills to do that and there are skills within the communities so the main the, the, the main the main approach for, for us is to is to say how do we then start to integrate the skills that because in most of the cases they are in true our idp processes it's very rare where we'll go to communities and start to up, uh, uh, to establish what is in there in that what are the strengths in that communities what is it that what are the capabilities of the what is it that the community can do and what is it that is currently taking place what is it that they're currently doing and what is it that as municipalities we've been doing so right uh, that we can build as on as a foundation but we just start afresh as if nothing has been happening what is it that you need what can we do for you those are the questions that she that you always get from the government approach now that's the mindset that I think uh, we are trying to focus on is to say, let's change the mindset in as much as we can meet, we can use this mixed approach, uh, but let us try to be more on the, let's try to look for strength than looking for, 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 for what isn't there uh, in the communities. Because I remember at some point, some, some guy, one of the guys would say, we don't go to IDPs because the IDPs, these guys from the IDP, they do not talk to us. They just talk to them. So there's no need for us to go to IDPs. So I think I agree with Ben when he says that we need to, 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 to acknowledge the past, but how do we then change the situation? Because I think part of acknowledging the past is to change the mindset from the what we used to get from the past and move forward now. Thank you. Okay, and it all starts with us. Is there, there's, there's a, um, a few more visitors that came in. Alison came in. If Rito is there, just say hello. Um, okay. And of course, like from the chat, trust is one of uh, the biggest currency that we, that we miss. Um, you know, it's there today and gone tomorrow type of thing. But um, from my experience thus far, it, there is that potential for it to, you know, for trust to be generated th just through genuine interaction, but it cannot just be just a few of what we will, what we call ABCD workers. How do we mainstream um, I, that word also? How do we influence, you know, broader government around that? And there's quite a number of promising opportunities. I'm going to invite directly, maybe Christella Engelbrecht also works in government. Shamyal, I am coming to you so that you can just give us a a ground up view from where you sit and what you experience with government. Christella, just your, your battles, you only you also had battles there in the Eastern Cape around the ABCD. Thank you, Conrad. Conrad, you know, one of my uh, big issue is that when local government goes through the public participation uh, oh. process and the IDP, it tends to be events and yeah. it tends to be exclusive. And that's where we lose people. So I think w within our department, we follow what we call the social mobilization process. We've moved away from just funding people uh, that are coming up with projects. So, and, and we lean very much on the sustainable livelihoods framework and ABCD then as the approach for the implementation. And the whole thing is that we need to go through local government. We have to go through the ward committee and council as the gatekeeper because the, our white paper on local government says the space belongs to local government and whatever we do must be sanctioned by them and needs to be coordinated by them. And then once we move in, we need to do a lot of consciousness building because we cannot just go and facilitate in a community without their permission. And they need to understand what are they giving permission for. And the next step is they need to give us a community partner because we come in, we facilitate, we leave. We're not staying there. And I'm in Makanda. I'm not staying in Alisdale, which is a few kilometers from here. So there must be a partner in Alisdale that will take ownership for this process of this community development journey they are going on. And that 
can be held accountable by the community for what happens with the outcomes of the process. And that will be the link with us and other government departments. So usually they then will establish a community development forum that will work with us. And, and then we will go through the, the asset mapping processes. And I think what Ikala has taught me, the free ages help you very much, the head, the heart and the hands to identify the gifts, the skills, the capacities of people. Because as you said, we miss that sometimes with the community mapping and the transect walks. And we do the association mapping that you can see who are the other people working there? Who are the partners that you can rope in? And we build the capacity of the community to take the process over. We should not be leading. We should be up holding their hand through the process. And they will come up with their own action plan of what they want to do. And that we will be then helping them to make to assist them to get it into the IDP, to get it in, link them with whoever can support them further. But the most important is to look at what can we do with what we have, then look at what can we do with a little bit of help from the outside, and what can we only do if people from the outside assist us. So that process is very slow. But we can see that even mayors are coming to us and say, we want this process in our community. Come to Cliplot, come to New Bethesda, come to Ripron. They will go to Bern and say, you must come to New Bethesda and come and assist us there because we need change. And the whole thing is that we need to hand over the stick. We need to have an open agenda when we move into a community and we must trust them to take ownership for it. Yes, as you said, it's early phases and we are busy with an amazing thing in Grahamstown with the Makanda Circle of Unity, which also came around like Sienico, um, dealing with the service delivery issues, but not as bad as Sienico. Um, and um, I'm very involved with the food cluster because of uh, the pandemic aggravated those issues. Bernie came in to do ABCD training but the women were so busy with survival, the, the, the community kitchen mamas, they, they did not move. But now we are working and see, but what else can we do? And, and, and we've realized that the community kitchens are not sustainable. And we are now looking at how can we transform the food security system within Makana to make sure that people have the right to food, that we move beyond food security to food sovereignty, because we need to deal with the structural barriers that prevent people to grow their own food, that we don't have cabbage bandits, that we need to assist people that they can help each, that they can create their own uh, opportunities with their skills, their assets. So there's a lot of interesting things going on. And it was just interesting when Bernie said, by chance, something similar is happening in Nelson Mandela, and she's involved with that. So we're also looking at peer learning in the future, because communities are busy taking ownership for their own journey. They, they are forging their own future. And as government, we are there to partner them and to accompany them and to connect them with the resources that are they available in government and to make available underutilized and unutilized assets. We must stop taking the lead. We are not the lead. I think for me that that is what I would like to put in. Conrad, you're on mute. Uh, my remote isn't working, you know, this technology is really messing me up. Thanks, I, thanks, Christella, um, for, for that overview of, of, of the efforts in the Eastern Cape. And of course, like, like you've said, like, you know, um, government must partner, but it's the how, again, it's the how. You know, in one of the earlier sessions um, or in uh, discussions with other, with an NGO, it's about not government giving to communities, but government giving against communities, against their efforts, you know, almost like sort of in, in, incentivizing. Just for the benefit of our, our, our visitors, that's not in South Africa, IDP stands for Integrated Development Plan. It's actually a great 
um, 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 plan, a, a, a grand plan for local governments where all the planning goes in. And it is a, a legislative requirement that citizens must be consulted. And obviously, that hasn't been working quite so well. The other point also raised that also um, Christella jogged, uh, um, you know, a, a memory is uh, it's also the way our society and communities are structured. You know, there's this whole concept of the structure of violence, you know, that that always like, you know, it's people can try how hard, you know, but there's always something that, you know, um, that they knock their heads against, you know, that stands up against them, against them in order for them to sort of pull themselves up by the boots, what boot strings. And of course, that's also part of the critiques. Are we saying now that when we introduce the ABCD, people must do it for themselves? So, so government actually has a very critical role to play. There's a comment from um, um, Janine that spoke about Ritu saying something in an earlier session. You wanna just read that Maurice? So Janine said in Ritu session earlier, she said something beautiful. They take the wheel and we are their co-travelers. Janine loved this. Okay, that sounds great. Uh, Ritu, you wanna explain, elaborate? Uh, Ritu is, a um, mic is off. So, okay, so, so it's also about the structure of violence. And then of course, how do we build a structure of belonging? I mean, and, and you know, there's also some good potential around, you know, re recreating and restructuring our societies where there's a stronger sense of belonging and identity. And there's actually some cases in South Africa and, and most of the ABCD practitioners can talk about that. I wanna, um, I'm just gonna call out names if you don't mind. So I wanna ask Shamyal just from where she stands as a community-based activist, you know, and, and her work and how she experienced government. Okay, hi everyone. Um, so I work for an a NGO um, called the Initiative for Community Advancement. We are a community foundation. Um, so we do a lot of things within our organization and within um, a certain municipal area here in the Western Cape. Um, so as the program officer, um, within my profile, I ran the citizenship engagement program. So this is all about ward conferences and equipping the community with the necessary skills, knowledge and networks to eventually take the lead um, or to actually understand um, some of the government processes. Um, so earlier in the year, we were set to have a few conferences um, and this would be apart from the, those that the government um, organizes or hosts. Um, so we facilitated two conferences and then we invited some of the ward um, committees, but then the response to us were that um, if it has nothing to do with the municipality or whatever, then they can't attend. And the councillor could not attend because they were mm. busy with all these um, things for elections, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. And then we actually stopped um, the ward conferences, um, or we postponed our ward conferences because, firstly, we did not actually get the support of the municipality, and also. Um, we, we are trying to figure out ways to build trust with the community because we are, uh, that we are in our infant years um, of this establishment. And then also um, the citizens in the community do not trust newcomers because of the promises that were made um, by the municipality and um, they were not carried out or carried through. Um, so we are trying to, um, we are trying new things, new programs, and we are also um, in the process of developing a web-based um, public participation tool where we are, where we will be um, sharing new or sharing certain information 
from the municipality like the IDP document because it was evident in these conferences that the community has no idea what the IDP is and how they are supposed to contribute to the IDP. And then we also have a youth public participation program where we are trying to actively encourage the youth to take part in um, public participation by them envisioning their dream town um, and coming up with ideas of what they would like in their town or what changes they would like to see within their town. And then we will be building scale models thereof. And we partnered with, with various departments within the municipality. Um, so this is also um, the first time we, will, we are implementing this um, project or program. Um, so we from our side are busy trying um, because we did not receive the municipality's uh, support, seeing that they are too busy with the elections um, and everything surrounding the election. So we are waiting <laughs> at this stage. I always, um, and colleagues tell me, no, Conrad, it's election time. We can't be doing any ABCD work or whatever. So I said, if I was a retail worker, I would have gone to work. If I was a factory worker, I would have gone to work, you know, about the morning and go to work after that or something like that. So, so I, as government officials, we don't have any excuse to, to continue our work. Great. Thanks for sharing, Shamiel. That's quite interesting. You must connect with Marisa around the work that you do um, in, in, in that community. In fact, um, you know, where, where possible, let's also share what you're doing. You know, and by sharing, because there's, there's actually, a, um, we're getting to a critical mass where we are going to reach the tipping point where we can sort of like um, spread the virus, the ABCD virus much more fast in government. At the moment, like there's lots of antidotes against ABCD so far, but there's promising opportunities. You've mentioned you've worked with departments. We're heading for three minutes to five and Alison is there. Alison, you wanna weigh in to what you've heard? And um, what do you think we should do as um, government as a big institution taking on an asset-based approach? Who said, Alison? I have so many thoughts about that. Um, no, they... <laughs> so... Did you draw something, Alison? <laughs> I, I, and I'm also processing the spread the virus, but I also, okay. so I work in government as my day job and I, and, I think it goes back to the institutions really need to know their role and that, mm. and I see them wanting to take on ABCD rather than mm. support ABCD projects in their mm. communities. And that's where I see that, that paradigm of yeah. it's not your role to be the, you know, and I think I alluded to this in, in the plenary yesterday of, you know, it's not the role of institutions or government to do the work, but to support mm, it's the true. work. Yeah, and getting to that point. And, and, and there's a good case study in New Zealand, is it? But um, who's the colleagues there? I can't get to the names now. Um, used to work with um, Cross, Nathan Cross, Nathan in, in the social development department, where they've actually um, actually developed a good approach, but of course with government backing and having almost like a development grant funding type of incentivizing it, but as incentivizing for a good purpose. Okay, is there anybody that we left out here that would, would like to say something or just let's go around of conclusion? Anybody can just jump in. Bulu, you'll be the last. Just uh, thanks for that, um, Alison. Could, could we, we need to know our place and our role. Any last burning comments from the chat? Uh, Maurice, please help her then. My fingers. Uh... No, um, the conversation was also just around capturing all our quotes. Um, and then Alison mentioned around the Ideas Cafe has a sticky wall as well to capture. Um, as well as to document it in the ABCD ebook glossary. Yeah. Some of the yeah. quotes, that the, the words that have come up. Um, I'll just read, drop the, the ABCD ebook site. Yeah. One of the things in the last two weeks um, that came to my mind is that the, one of the critiques is ABCD is micro, but imagine your gut bacteria, you know, decreases. You're going to end up in a whole lot of like trouble. 
So you need to have a, a critical mass of bacteria. That is what the virus the bag. And, and, and one of the things that came to mind when we were in one of the municipalities in, in Johannesburg, the, the, the ABC actually gives citizens a good tool on how to engage with government, to, to invite government to the table and determine, dictate they, they own, you know, their terms. Um, sort of how do they want government to engage with them? So Shamil, that is something that you should keep into consideration. And don't stress, we are also disappointed by our own governments with some of these things, but we don't get disappointed. Um, that's my last word. Any last words before we ask anybody to comment? saying bye-bye comments before Pulu ask. Um, then one last thing we're gonna post, okay, just post in the, in uh, Maurice, uh, the, that link. Uh, we, yeah, we, I'm we, posting we, in the chat and Janine also posted in her group, um, her business page that has motivational quotes. Oh yeah. Um, yeah, and she now also added her email there, so. Yeah, and, uh, and of course, Ritu is leading a community ownership in evaluation group of the Asia Pacific region. Okay. So that ownership thing is it's 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 quite um key and critical. What and what does it mean when citizens say they own something or they've made that? The the the, the link that um Maurice is going to share now um is just um some snippets that we made where we use the ABC the approach to engage with citizens or community members linked to a government program around the IDP. So there's also some the, the IDP integrated development plan, this grand plan that local government must have. So there was, uh, it, it was quite an effort, but within three, four hours, it showed the potential of people grasping it, uh, wanting to take it on because, because it becomes a, if I can use the word, a positive weapon in their, in, in their hands to engage, not just with government, but with themselves. Pulu, any last, okay, no, last words? Yeah, thanks, M. Serenzi. I think uh, one most one important issue I think is been said by Benny about building relationship and in fact not just relationship and authentic relationship. And I think she said something about trust. Yes, I think uh, part of the work that I think we should strive to do or inspire to do is to build relationship, not only amongst ourselves as government, but building relationship between ourselves and the communities. And I think that would build trust amongst ourselves together with the people. But the reason why I'm saying that, I just want to relate to the story of Kasi, Kasi Skunmak in what Skunmak. Yeah. Yeah, yes. Kasi Skunmak in, mm. in, in what field, because uh, I think- oh, oh, this... Sorry, sorry, Pulu, what will is in, um, on the Eastern side of, Johannesburg in another municipality. Okay. Oh, it's where you land when you fly into South Africa. Yes, Africa. It's, it's, it's part of the lessons that uh, mm. I've learned when I was there to say that at some point, I think you just said it uh, earlier to say, as you were, as we were busy working in, the, in those, but in, in some of the communities, people just started to raise issues to say, when government comes in, we tend to, to, to it's either we make or we break the community initiatives. And I think that it happens because in as, well, in as much as we do the work as government, uh, we forget to build relationships. And I think that as we move for, as, as, we, as, as we move forward as, a, as, as our next step, Conrad, uh, is to build relationship. Uh, it's important that we should build relationship with our communities and uh, we must work with them, not us working for them. I think it's one of the things that we we need, we, we, we are focusing on, and uh, hence we have, we we we, have, we are trying to apply the ABCD approach. But nevertheless, I had a lot of experience. I've gained a lot of experience in throughout the sessions that I've joined, including this one, uh, especially the social development in the Eastern Cape, where they have actually adopted ABCD as an approach that they 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 they. they, 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 they they, 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 they should focus. I think as as, as, lo as a fully local municipality, we can learn one or two lessons from the social development in the Eastern Cape to mm -hmm. Yeah, no, no, ab ab absolutely. Thank you for that, Pulu. Um, with that, uh, ladies and gentlemen, um, um, ABCD Msebenzi, we call ourselves Msebenzi. It's uh, 
Zulu word for worker. So we are ABCD Msebenzi. So you are all now honorary members of that club. So next time when we meet, so instead of Mr. or Mrs. or um, whatever, it's um, Msebenzi. Um, okay, Msebenzi Janine. Thank you very much um, um, in the conference in October from Christella Engelbrug. And uh, colleagues, people that know me and um, know that I don't know how to spell goodbye. <laughs> um, okay, so we're gonna share. Yeah, we're gonna share. And, and thanks for that, Christella, the legacy of Masadi. She's, the, she's still around. Um, we, um, okay, we are going to share the information, um, of course, through the unconference um, sites. But I think uh, but the South Africans here, here just need to try and come together. We need that breakthrough. There's, there's enough um, 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 ev um, um, evidence or enough uh, potentials for breakthroughs to happen within and outside of government. If it's not within government, how do we use outside of government to help widen those cracks? People, thank you for that. Thank you very much um, for your, um, Marisa, for your hosting. And then of course, Ritu, we still need to connect our communities between South Africa and India, community to community type of dialogues. I didn't forget Conrad. about that. Yeah, Ritu, there you are. And thanks and, uh, for allowing an Asian to be in the African space. <laughs> yeah, no, no, um, uh, one of the ideas is that yeah, what we I remember uh, community community people um, talk to each other. So uh, Pulu, if, imagine we have community members talking to community members from India, from you know Popolong. Maybe yeah. um, it's it's just amazing. Um, yeah, um, we just have to make this movement go. Yes, um, everybody, thank you very much for this nice intimate group, and let's make that connections work. Shamil, thank you, Christella. I'm there in the Eastern Cape, coming for my food parcel. Cheers and see you later. Cheers, everybody. Bye. Okay, thanks, Maurice, for a Bye. good thumbs up. Okay, zoom you later. Bye-bye. Bye, everybody. <laughs>